Hi all, this is Dennis and you are on the Den Electro channel. Many radio amateurs have such a situation that it is necessary to measure large currents, 10, 20, 30 amps, and sometimes even 100. But there is no suitable one at hand, and there is only a Chinese tester that measures a maximum of 10 amperes. What to do in these cases? A piece of copper wire will help us get out of this situation. As we remember from the course of physics in nature, there are no ideal conductors. Therefore, when an electric current passes through a wire, there's always a voltage drop. An ordinary multimeter will help us accurately measure this voltage drop with millivolt measurement function. Knowing how much the voltage in the conductor sank, we can calculate what current strength is now in the circuit. This method is quite simple and I will now describe it in detail. To assemble the circuit you will need bare wire on which we will measure the voltage drop, power supply for supplying current, multimeter, wires, any load, preferably more powerful. Then we apply power and the current will flow through a closed circuit. The connected multimeter will record the voltage on the wire. To be precise, the voltage drop will occur in all parts of the circuit. But we will only work in one place. Before the multimeter will show accurate measurements, it must be calibrated. We will do this using a reference ammeter. It should be with the maximum possible measurement range. Connect it in series with the wire and the bulb. The theory is understood. Now I'll show you how it all looks in practice. On the table, I place the things that I showed in the diagram. Power unit, from which I will supply current. A piece of copper wire with a diameter of one and a half millimeters. Ammeter for 10 current amperes. Multimeter. It will measure voltage up to 200 millivolts. I will load the circuit with an electronic load. First, I will make a current of 4 amperes. With the help of crocodiles, I hook the multimeter probes to the wire. The display shows the number 6. This means that a voltage of 6 millivolts drops on this piece of wire. If you measure a segment longer, then the voltage drop will be greater. Moving the crocodile, we need to achieve the same readings on the ammeter and multimeter. Thus, we calibrated the multimeter. If the load is made larger, then the voltage drop will increase in direct proportion. With a current of 6 amperes, the drop is 6 millivolts. 6 and a half. Then 7. Eight amps. I add more. Nine amps. The maximum measurements are also in line with expectations. At low current, everything is also the same. Now I will apply the maximum load. The ammeter goes off scale shows more than 10 amperes. And the voltmeter shows the number 15. This means that now the current in the circuit is 15 amperes. In this way, very large currents can be measured, for example, welding machines. But for this, it will be necessary to take a thicker conductor. Fine. We applied this method to direct current. But what if we have alternating current? 
Let's say we have some kind of load. It is powered by alternating current. And there is only a DC ammeter. To use it in an alternating current circuit, it is necessary to turn the alternating current into direct current. To do this, you need to introduce a diode bridge into the circuit. It connects as usual, but not directly to the network, but in series with the load. And an ammeter is connected to its output plus and minus. Thus, alternating current will flow through the bulb, and direct current through the ammeter. The current that the ammeter will show will flow throughout the circuit. The characteristics of the diodes must naturally correspond to the measured current. In this circuit, as in the previous example, you can also use a piece of wire to measure large currents. First, it is also connected in series with the ammeter. Then we connect the multimeter and calibrate it. Using this method, you can measure the current strength not only of the mains voltage, but also of the converted one. Let's say it comes out of the secondary winding of the transformers. Naturally, I prepared such a transformer and connected it as the previous power supply. The only difference is that an alternating current will come out of it and be rectified into a direct current. Ammeters will measure it, and I will connect the load to alternating current. After connecting the nichrome spirals, the current in the circuit is 5 amperes. Then I increased the voltage so that at the same load, the current became more. The multimeter shows 11 and a half amperes, and the ammeter needle went off scale. Here I plugged everything into an outlet. I will measure the current of the kettle. On the left, I added another multimeter that shows the voltage. The current consumption of the kettle turned out to be 7 amperes, which surprised me a little. I expected about 10 since the kettle is 2200 watts. Many of you have probably already understood that this conductor acts as a shunt. And the principle of measuring the voltage drop is used in many ammeters. That's all for today. Put likes. Subscribe to my channel. Click on the bell. Ask questions in the comments if something is not clear to someone. And bye everyone.